Hi guys, my name is Hannah Saber from HR Images. Tonight's video is going to be the battle of the 85s G Master and Battis versus the 90mm Macro. So stay tuned. First things first, just want to thank Mirrorless Rentals in Australia for loaning me the 85mm G Master lens. Um, for those of you in Australia that would like to rent out any Sony cameras, lenses or anything, have a look in the, um, the description below. We'll have the, I'll have the link to their um, website if you want to sign up for um, notices once everything's up and running. Uh, you'll get notice what gear they have and prices and everything. Um, so if you'd like to sign up, every, all the details are below. Uh, the baddest I borrowed off of a friend of mine, Paul. Um, thanks for learning me this as well. Now, uh, this video is going to be um, the battle of the G Master, Battis and the 90mm. Uh, the reason why I decide to do this video is because a lot of people underestimate the 90mm. I have constantly get questions asked, why do I use the 90mm as a portrait lens? Why don't I just buy the Battis or the G Master? And a lot of people just sort of ask questions and people are saying that it is not a portrait lens, it's more of a macro lens. but this video will show you guys how good the portrait lens this is and how well it can keep up with these two. Um, so I'll have side by side comparisons uh, with different f-stops in studio portraits, outdoor portraits in daylight and I'll have uh, night shots with bokeh. So you get to see the difference in the different f-stops and stuff. Um, roughly, this is roughly about uh, $1300 Australian. The G Master, that's the FE 19mm. The G Master lens is about 2800 and the Battis you're looking at about 1900 so that, that's the price difference between them. Uh, the other difference is, as you can tell, the size. The Battis is a smaller lens. It is lightweight as well, comparing to the other two. The good thing I like about the Battis is it's got the LED screen as well, so you can see the focal distances and stuff with the Battis. Um, other being lightweight, uh, great um, runaround lens. Uh, the G Master lens, I actually love the G Master lens just for a few reasons. Um, it is a bit bigger and a bit heavier, but that is due to the amount of glass and uh, optics it's got in this lens. Uh, what I love about it actually a lot is because I've, due to the 35 f1.4 Zeiss, I love the aperture ring. And uh, how holding the G Master, it just felt like it was at home because I've been too used to the, Z the 35mm. Um, it's also got the focus hold button as well. And I love because of the f1.4, because of the bokeh as well, um, which you guys will see. And comparing it with the 90mm now, the, the 90mm, it's best of both worlds. You can use it for portraits and you can use it for macro. It's uh, great for weddings, for if you want to do ring shots, detail shots, you need macro lens and then you, all of a sudden you, need, you see something happening, you want the portrait lens, you can switch to the portrait and this is what I loved about this one. Um, it's got the little um, focus, you can just press it up for autofocus and manual focus if you press down. It's got the focus hold button, it's got the changes for the different focal length um, switches here and you've got steady shot on and off. So. Those, that's really sort of the more the differences between these three price, size and just a little detail and features on these lens. Uh, what I'll do, I'll turn on my computer and I'll show you the side by side uh, comparisons. We'll go through them. At the end of the video, I will give you my, my thoughts on what I prefer, what I liked and why, why I prefer it. Um, and I'll also have on the bottom of the video in the description a link to the high res files of the photos I've taken as well. So you can actually go in and take your time and have a look at them as well. So it, it will help you guys to choose which lens is best suited for you. As each lens, they're suited for different purposes. So it just depends on one, your budget, uh, the type of shoots you want, whether you want bokeh, whether you prefer um, macro, those sort of things. So I'll go through that eventually with you at the end of the video. So, um, so stay tuned for that. So let's get started. Show you the, these three. Now these three are taken at studios. They're shot at f5.6 um, with the same lighting, the Godox 8360 on a softbox. 
So these aren't edited, these are straight from the camera, all raw files, as you can see, the AR file, ARW. Um, the first one's the G Master, the second one is the Badass, and the last one is the 90mm. So if you're looking at them, if you're looking at them normal side by side, it is sort of a bit hard to tell. Um, you could sort of kind of see where the G Master looks a bit softer comparing it to the Badass, um, where the 19mm is looks a lot sharper than the other two. Uh, what I'll do, I'll put it into Photoshop here, um, showing you the difference. Um, that's it, just there at 50%. Just going to zoom in at 200 so you can see the eyes. Uh, the first one is the G Master, and the second one's the 90mm, and the third one is the Baddest. So you can see the difference clearly, whereas the Macro it wins in the sharpness, coming second as the Baddest, and the G Master coming in third in terms of sharpness. If we now go to to the next set, this is shot, these are shot outdoor. Um, the first one is the baddest, second is the 90mm and the third is the G Master. As you can see with these lenses, they're absolutely amazing. Um, at 3.5 you still get a bit, bit of a nice bokeh. Um, they're very similar in terms of their bokeh. The G Master and the 90 mil millimeter looks a bit identical in their bokeh. Um, so does the Baddest. So they're all identical. There's this sort of similar smoothness and everything. Um, we'll just open them up into Photoshop. We're going to zoom in now. We've got at 100%. Uh, match zoom and match location so looking at the outdoor shot the 90 millimeter clearly it is sharper but if you're looking at the baddest and the G master they're looking very identical in terms of the sharpness being in the outdoor um, whether it is more light uh, or not with these, I've used a, um, IAF um, with all of them. IAF is really good. They're both accurate and fast. Um, the thing with the the 90mm, not all the time, but sometimes when I pick up the camera, put the, the 90mm on, sometimes it will hunt a bit in focus, but once it finds it, it's just spot on. It's accurate. It's fast. I've never had any delays or issues. It's just oh, sometimes, very rarely, when I start up the camera, it's sort of... Um, hunts a bit whether it sort of kind of resets the focus so you just to adjust but clearly with the baddest and the G Master they're very identical in terms of the sharpness the G Master does produce a bit more of a warmer tone color than the other two but the 90 millimeter is a sharper one being at f 2.8 zooming in on the bokeh sorry 3.5 zooming on the bokeh the bokeh is very identical to each other all of them at 3.5 so what we'll do now, I will go to the next set, which is at 2.8 with all of them. So that's at 2.8 um, with all of them. Now, 2.8, they're all the same in their bokeh. There isn't sort of much difference. Um, where the G Master, you can tell, it has more of a circular bokeh comparing it to the baddest in the gym and the 90mm because they got more of an overly hexagony shape in the baddest in the G Master um, whereas the G Master is more of a sort of more of a perfectly circular bokeh in them um, so that's with these ones that's at f2.8 going at uh, f1.8 we go matching it to the f2.8 in the macro and 1.7 in the G Master. So G Master is the third one, middle is a 90, and 85 is the first one is the baddest. So if you look at it, going to yep. Now f1.8 and the uh, 2.8 and the 1.7. Now the G Master you can tell from the 1.7 that it has more of a creamier and softer bokeh comparing it to the baddest 
the Batis and the and the 90 millimeter to me at 1.8 and 2.8 they're looking very identical in their bokeh there isn't much of a difference in their bokeh the Batis is probably a bit smoother whereas the macro you can see that the bokeh is a bit sharper but other than that their smoothness their actual blur is very identical um, at f1.8 comparing it to the f2.8 and you can clearly see that this is a sharper lens the 90 millimeter comparing it to the the um, Batis and the G Master I'll just quickly open that up into Photoshop just to zoom in just to show you sort of see with the bokeh uh, the G Master is a 98, 90 is the macro and that um, at f1.7 I will go to the other side because the other side has got a bit more yeah there we go actually I will do it in horizontally that way it's a bit easier so you can sort of see more with the bokeh okay now the 98 being the G Master, you can see how it's more of a nice, smooth, creamy bokeh. The 90 millimeters being at f2.8, it's not as, it's still creamy, but obviously the G Master has more. But if you're comparing it to the baddest, this is what sort of kind of is very interesting, I find. And I think a lot of people, some people might agree, some people might disagree. But this is my thoughts. So this, these images will have the high res images on, on the link below with 500px for you um, to be able to look at them and you can make your own comparison and decision but the 1.8 and the 2.8 they're looking very identical in their bokeh there isn't much of a difference again the Batis does provide a softer bokeh whereas the macro you can see that it's a bit sharper in the bokeh but um, bokeh wise the G Master wins hands down um, being at f2.8 all of them even you can tell from the macro lens that the eyes is sharper Whereas the Batis look like it's a bit sharper than the G Master. The G Master, it is still a sharp lens, but the Batis look like it has a bit um, more sharpness into it than the G Master. But bokeh wise, the G Master comes down hands down. The Batis in 90mm at f1.8 and f2.8, uh, they're very identical. Um, again, the 90mm looks a bit sharper in their bokeh, where the Batis is softer. What, what we'll do now, I'll go to the Comparing it to the f1.4, as you can see, f1.4 has a lot, of, it gives a really nice separation to the background, um, to the background, and it's a lot smoother and creamier. And as you can see from even looking at it normally without zooming in, the Batis and the 90mm at f1.8 and f2.8, the bulk is very, very similar. Um, the G Master has a nice circular bokeh where the 90mm and the 1.8 doesn't. Uh, okay, This test here is actually kind of, I got a bit excited with this one. This is just showing you 2.8 with the G Master, 90mm and Batis. Now we'll zoom in, get into it. Now as you can tell the first one is the 90, second is uh, sorry, first one's G Master, second one's 90 mil, and the third one's the Batis. G Master at f2.8 has a nice circular bokeh. It's amazing. It's that it's got that perfect bokeh. Whereas the 90 mil is a bit more of an overly shape, and the Batis is more of a hexagon shape. It's not perfect circle, but it is more of a hexagon shape. So, but at f2.8 the bokehs are similar in terms of the size and everything um, with between the G Master and the 90mm just the um, you do have some hexagons circular shapes with the 90mm but not all of them some of them get into that overly um, shape whereas the baddest they go with the flow We've got more of a flow of a hexagon shape uh, if we go at this one this one that one and that. Okay. This one's at f1.7, 1.8. That's 1.7 the G Master, 1.8 Batis, and a 90 millimeter macro at f2.8. So, having a look at them side by side, at f1.7, 
f1.8 the baddest at f1.8 their bokeh ends up going more overly eggy shape more of an eggy shape than the f2.8 in the 90 millimeter the baddest sorry the g master it's uh, got a bit more of a bigger bokeh and it's still perfectly circular you do have some odd shapes here and there but it still retains its perfectly circular um, bokeh in them whereas the baddest starts to get very overly an eggy shape um, whereas the 2.8 looks a bit more pleasing comparing it to the 1.8 now we'll do the last set okay First one's a G Master 1.4, 2.8, and 1.8. Having a look at them now, side by side. Still retains its perfectly circular, perfect circular um, bokeh. Um, still, you do have some odd shapes, but it's still got that pleasing bokeh to have a look at. Everything sort of, it's still, everything is still sharp as well. If we have a look, and. Uh, this still retains its perfect bokeh at 1.4. Um, these two again, it's sort of as you can see, more of an overly shape and eggy shape. So still got a bit, still have um, every now and then you sort of got a perfect circle, but um, they're very sort of identical in terms of their bokeh. But this probably has a bit more of a larger bokeh being at a 1.8, um, and this is a small bokeh being at 2.8. But they're sort of similar shaped, whereas the G mass is more circular. What I've got as well, I've got this shot, these shots, these were shot at, these are all at 2.8, just without a mod model, just more strictly bokeh. Uh, the last one is the, the G Master, first one's the nine, second one is 90, and the first is the Baddest. So, having a look at them side by side, the Baddest and the G Master at f2.8, they are very identical, the hexagon shape. As well, so you got a bit similar sort of um, imperfection of bokeh, so similar shape. 2.8 G Master, hands down, wins perfect circular bokeh, as you can see. Now, if we go to 1.8, leaving the G Ma the 90 mil at 2.8, and going to 1.7 in the in the G Master. Uh, 1.8 and 2.8. Um, the 1.8 Baddest tends to sort of now get a bit more of a circular bokeh, but still got that very egg-shape bokeh in them, uh, where the, the 90 mil has a bit more of a pleasing bokeh. Even though it's not circular, it's got more of a hexagon-y shape. So it's not a perfect circle, but it's a bit more pleasing to have a look at than what the Baddest is uh, um, producing on this image. But they're sort of uh, the 1.8 Baddest is a bit larger in bokeh, than the 2.8, whereas the G Master at 1.7 it still retains that perfect circular bokeh. And then if we just drop it down to the 1.4, so you guys can have a look, 1.4 G Master. Again, larger bokeh, perfect circle bokehs in the G Master, um, comparing it to the other two. So you know, bokeh wise, hands down, the uh, the G Master clearly wins that bokeh. Still retains its sharpness as well in terms of portraits, as well um, the 90 millimeter um, being the sharpest. The baddest looks like it is attack sharper than the G Master, but the G Master it is still a sharp lens and still produces an amazing quality. So you have seen uh, the comparison photos on on my computer um, between the 90 millimeter G Master and the baddest. So guys below i've got the link as well um, to my 500 px page with all the high-res images so you, you can have a look at them and see them at your own time and your own pace and compare them and make up the decision yourself uh, this video is supposed to help you guys make a better decision on which lens best suits you and which will work better in terms of your situation with budget in the image quality sharpness and bokeh um, give you a brief uh, rundown what i've chosen and why i've chosen it I went with the 90mm macro, um, opposed to the baddest at the time, the G Master wasn't out. The reason why I went with the 90mm macro was because it's best of both worlds. So when I shoot weddings, events, I'm doing macro shots, 
with weddings, um, especially weddings, they're on the go. They're nonstop. You've got no time to breathe. It's you got to make sure you are ready to catch that the special shot. Whereas if you have a uh, macro lens, you're doing macro shots, you, you turn around, oh, the bride's crying. She's going to give the father a hug. That's going to be a special moment, for example. You're not going to sit there two minutes to, to undo your lens, put a new lens in and take the photo. With a 90 millimeter, I just switch it into a different focal range. Can be able to shoot portraits, bang, I get the shot. So best of both worlds, this is why I chose this lens. Um, if you ask my opinion in what I would choose out of the baddest in the G Master, my, my opinion, I would choose the G Master. Reason being is the, I prefer, I love the aperture ring. Um, it is, yes, it is a bit heavier than the other, than this, the baddest, the baddest is lightweight, but due to the glass and the optics and stuff in this lens, you know, you paint, it is high quality, so it is a bit heavier. But I love the aperture ring in it. Um, the f1.4 bokeh is the, this produces amazing bokeh, perfect circles. With the 90mm, I don't, the reason I don't want to get the baddest is because I find there's not much difference between the f2.8 and 1.8, as you can see from the images. Now, it could be just me, but you know, you guys make your own decision as well. But um, the bokeh is very identical. The only difference is the 90mm, it is, has a sharper bokeh where the baddest is softer. But then this is why I wouldn't, me coming from having the 90mm, I wouldn't choose the baddest. I would go for the, the G Master. That's my opinion. This is why I prefer it. I love the image quality this produces as well as the bokeh. Um, if you guys are on a very tight budget, you want a portrait lens and you do macro, go for the 90mm. You guys, you won't be disappointed. People say, you know, it's not a portrait lens, it's a macro lens, but you know what? It does amazing for portraits. So do not underestimate this lens. If you don't do macros and you're on a budget and you can afford, go for the baddest. The baddest, you know, if you're just strictly doing portraits, the baddest is really good. Don't get me wrong, it is a great lens. It's very good image quality, sharp as well. If budget's not an issue and you really want bokeh in it, the G Master. It is a bit expensive, but you know, you are paying for the image quality, you are paying for a great lens. And this is what I love about the G Master. So, you know, guys, have a look at the images. Leave your comments and give me your opinion on what you what you prefer, um, which one you like. If you got any questions, feel free to ask. Below, I've got links to four major groups as well that I run. If you, um, I'm most active on them, so if you want to interact with me more, you can catch me on those groups. I run a portrait group, a bokeh group, um, Sony A7 Professional Series, and an A77 A77 II group. So if you guys got any associations with any of those groups, feel free to join. My pages as well um, are below if you want to follow my work. Um, so don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my video and stay tuned for future ones. See you guys. Have a good night.